Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Uh, my spaceship has gone missing as you can see here. There's this big empty space where it used to be. And that's because I've been working on a, um, a system for automating it and having it running automatically back and forth between um, between space and Norvis and bringing all of all of the stuff up here that used to be brought up by rocket. And the idea, the point, the reason I've done this is because it should make things a lot easier and a lot smoother because the um, the spaceship can travel a bit more often because it doesn't use up these rocket parts every time it goes. And so in theory, I shouldn't run out of them. But actually looking at this, I'm going to need to tidy this up a bit because there's a bit of a rocket part backlog forming here. So I'm going to need to send this rocket off somewhere and find find somewhere that needs more rocket parts to send it to. But we'll think we'll worry about that another time. So the important thing I've added up here for the for the sp spaceship uh, automation is this. This is a docking clamp and that's something that the spaceship can fly up and attach to. And as you can see it's got an output signal on it um, giving it a an ID of one and that means you can have multiple of these on a planet somewhere and have the spaceship fly up and connect to the appropriate one. So I could have, for example, I could have lots of different drop-off stations like I've got here with the rockets but all waiting for spaceships to turn up and drop the drop off uh, and connect to them with their different using the different docking clamps. Now because this is here let's go and have because this isn't here rather let's go and have a look at Norvis which is where the where the more interesting things are happening because this is where the actual spaceship itself is. And so I've done a few interesting things here um, in order to get it automated. Now let's start with the, the, the very basic stuff. As you can see there's this belt coming in across here. And what this one does is this, this works in much the same way that, that I had belts working previously uh, to load into the, into, or inserters working previously to load into the, the rocket that used to be here and I have since pulled up. And that's why it's a bit of a weird shape here. Because I don't know if you remember, but all of these belts used to come in to the rocket silo that was in this space and so they, they then load in the things that were needed. So we're still getting the signal from here, from the signal receiver, coming down from space telling the end um, telling all of these all of these things what's what um, what's available what's what I've got in stock up in space and also in the spaceship and therefore what extra things need to be brought up so down here for example we've got this one is for uh, for the blue science so this is set to, to to insert if blue science is less than zero and then if it does so, sorry to run if blue science is less than zero and if that runs the blue science will filter through these um, the splitters and then carry on up here round here and then down this down this rather long and convoluted belt and which actually goes into the spaceship itself using this underground belt here and some sort of magic that I'm not going to worry about for when the spaceship goes away and so as you can see that yeah there was an underground belt came in there and got immediately loaded into the um, in, into the warehouse as part of the spaceship but this is this is linked up to all of the other things that we had feeding in before so they all work in exactly the same way it's just instead of the belt going up to the rocket and being loaded into that it flows all the way down here and is loaded into the spaceship so in the spaceship we we don't have very much stuff at the moment because it's only just started it's obviously been up to the um, the space station fairly recently either that or I've um, Either that, or I've just just not been using stuff up rap quickly enough, which could be because I'm not doing any research. It could just be that I don't need I don't need very much stuff at the moment. But when this does eventually fill up, this took quite a lot of thought because um, I, I needed to have a, have a signal be transmitted somehow to the to the spaceship's control system here. This is the brain of the spaceship to tell it that this was full and therefore it was time to launch. Um, and unfortunately, yes, I can link up to this um, this this uh, warehouse, but there isn't a signal that tells you how many how many slot available slots there are in a in a warehouse or anything useful like that. So instead, what I've ended up doing is put in this uh, split these splitters here. Um, this one's prioritizing taking out. This one's prioritizing putting sending them along the bottom. So if when the stuff is flowing in, it will just flow straight across the bottom side here and go around here and be inserted and be put into the um, into the into the warehouse and this seems to be enough inserters that the um, that no matter how much stuff is flowing through it will load be all be loaded into here without it slowing down however once this becomes full this belt will start to back up all the way along here and then eventually it'll get to here and then it'll and back up th all the way through here and then this bit will back up and we're watching so we're watching this piece of belt here to see what's on that and that's linked up to one of the in one of the um, decider combinators over here and this one's saying when anything is greater than zero so when there's anything on this piece of belt here then it's going to output a tick and ticks are basically my way of saying yes the uh, the rocket is ready to launch uh, so in this case want that 
you have to you have to build up a certain number of ticks depending on what's going on, and I'll I'll get onto that in a moment. So as soon as the so when this fills up, it'll flow back up to here, and this will fill up, and eventually, and, and it, as it backs up, that'll tell the rocket it's full, and the rocket will launch. At the other end, we've got a similar sort of thing. We've got two, these two inserters that are dumping onto this belt here that goes to this underground belt, and on the in the space station, if we go back up into back up to the space station and it struck me in some completely random place let's look at the bit I'm actually interested in over here there is a matching underground belt here so anything that comes out of the spaceship will go onto this belt flow all the way down here and then I've just repurposed the system I had before so this is all going to get loaded into the landing pad here and from there it's going to get shoved into this um, into this warehouse I probably could have had that carry on straight through and just lump it low straight into the warehouse but since I'd already got all of this stuff set up for dealing with the science packs I decided it was probably easier just to have have one single th just just tap into what I already had set up rather than trying to reinvent the wheel yes if I was doing it again from scratch I'd probably make something a bit neater a bit smoother and, and sort out various problems with it in fact I'd probably use splitter and splitters to um to pipe out all the science packs before they even got into here but that doesn't really matter that's um not that's not the issue for this it, as it is it will work like this so i don't need to worry about it so the the important the difficult part of this is, is setting up the spaceship to do what i actually want it to do and so there's two parts this is the spaceship control console which is the, essentially the control panel that uh, tells it which you can use you can use manually if you want you can use it to tell it you can use it to look up things like how how, how you're doing for your current inte hull integrity um, you can set maximum speed you can see how much fuel there is in it and whether there's enough to launch um, and there is just uh, you can look at where it is you can look at where it's set to go to which in this case is Norbit's orbit and um, and you can launch it from here if you want as well and I don't know why that's disabled um, oh it's disabled because there isn't isn't actually enough fuel in it so we need to pump a bit more fuel in through here but that's a, another problem which I shall sort out another time so across here we've got the various different bits of information that the console is outputting so the planet 511 at the beginning um, shows that the destination for the for the for the ship is currently set to 511 um, and I believe that is the um, that's the the uh, orbit orbit around Norvis so if I, when it takes off it that's where it's going to try to go to We've got that next. We've got the um, we've got the AA, which is the telling me that the spaceship is anchored currently in zone 510, and that's Norvis surface. So down on the down on the ground on at, on Norvis is um, is 510. So orbit always seems to be one more than than the planet uh, planet level, and that might be useful in the future. I don't know. D tells me about the density of asteroids around here. So how um, how much defensive stuff the ship is going to need. In this case, it's, it's only 100, which is, seems to be a standard density, which means the four laser cannons I've got set up on the top of the ship here are, should be easily sufficient to, uh, to go through that at the speeds the ship is capable of. Uh, we also see that the, um, the current distance to the destination um, is 100, so that's how, how far it is from ground to orbit. So you can use that to measure whether you've reached your current destination or not. Um, we've got the spaceship ID as well, so that's potentially useful if I ever need to tell spaceships apart. And then finally, we've got the current level of current speed. So that's current, because it's minus two, that means that the uh, the ship is currently anchored somewhere. In this case, anchored to the planet surface, and that means it's suitable. Uh, and that means it's acceptable to, to unload stuff. And it tells you that the ship is currently parked. So we can use that with all of these combinators across here to do various clever things. So, for example, on this side. I've got, um, I can't even remember how, how this works now. <laughs> ah, yes, we, yeah, we, so we're using one, one block of these we're using to tell if this, this side is telling if we're on, if we're in the, on the planet, sorry, if we're in, if we're in space, if, and if it's if it's time to go. So this one looks at, is the current location 511, which means in orbit around Norvis, and if so, it outputs one tick. This one says, are we currently empty? So if everything equals zero, then this this warehouse is empty, and so it'll show that there's nothing nothing in there. Therefore, the ship is ready to get, ready to depart from orbit and come back down to the planet for more stuff. And, in, and if that's the case, then it outputs a second green tick. This one here counts the number of green ticks coming in. If it's equal to two, then it outputs everything on the um, on, on it outputs all of its inputs to to the to the output directly, copying the number straight across. And so that's also linked up to this one 
which says set speed to a ridiculously large number because it's we can go as fast as we want the ship is capable of the ship can go at its maximum speed without being in danger it says to launch and it says to go to um, and it says to go to down to the planet planet 510 which is Norvis so in other words when we get the two ticks in from here so no stuff and we're on we're in space then this will output the signals in here across to the sits console which tells it to t take off and fly to the and fly to the planet on the other side we've got something vaguely similar um, we've got so, so on this this one is looking at if we're on 510 which means if we're on Norvis and anything is greater than zero and that's linked to here so if there's anything on this belt and we're on Norvis then send the signals from this one which as you can see is full speed launch and go to the orbit play orbital place um, then if we get at least two ticks send the input through and it will again launch and in this case it will go up it will fly back up into orbit because it's full and ready to go I have also messed around with uh, setting with working up with creating a timer and that's been that was a little bit more a little bit more of a headache but I did eventually manage to get it to work well enough um, although I've disconnected it at the moment because it was just burning through fuel far too quickly and I decided it wasn't worth it and the reason I was working on this is because I, I one of the reasons I wanted the spaceship to fly more often is because I kept finding I was running out of sort of little sundries up in space so things like um, big electric motors or heat shield tiles or stuff like that I'd have a couple of thousand of them requested and there'd be a couple of thousand of them in the in the warehouse on or in the, in the rocket but it wouldn't be launching because it wasn't full so I thought well let's try and make it launch every 15 minutes so the way this works and let me try and think let me think about this because this was complicated and made my brain hurt <laughs> so we have if the ship is on the ground uh, then out, then yeah, then copy the then copy C across to the, to the to the output, and this one says if the ship is not on the ground, so if it's greater than minus two, then copy one over to C, and that reset and that works as a reset. So anytime the ship is moving, it will reset C, which is my counter, to back to one. So it's um, so so it's it, uh, to, to to reset it so that it's it, when it lands, it's not it's not going to take off again immediately. This one then adds one to C and outputs it back out again, passes it straight down again. So that means if we're if we're in space, this will be passing passing it through and setting C to one. This will set it to two and then we'll pass it into this decider. If we're on the ground, this will pass this one will pass C straight through it, and so it'll get it'll get incremented every every tick. And we're running at 60 UPS, so 60 updates per second. So it's every time every second that will update 60 times. This one is monitoring C to see if it ever goes above 54,000. If it goes above 54,000, then we output a tick, and then I can wire that into anything, anywhere where I want the ship to launch, if after a certain, after that amount of time. Uh, currently, we've got to 36,000, which is not 54,000, so it's only part way through. Um, but that will allow me to tell the ship to launch based on based on a certain amount of time. But as I said, I've disconnected that because it was launching too often. So I think what I'm probably going to end up doing is just launching it manually whenever I have problems, but basically just letting it letting it fly up when it's full. Uh, this was going to be to set the speed manually um, when I thought that was a good idea. What was this for? Ah, yes. And finally, if speed... if Sorry, if distance to, to where it's going is minus one, then it's copying... Then it's copying these signals over, and so minus one means the spaceship has stopped, but hasn't anchored. So at that point, we need to copy across the signals that tell it to anchor, which in this case is out with is uh, one thousand, which is this one. This uh, this this is out this is outputting a signal of one thousand because this is clamp number one thousand. I just arbitrarily numbered that, and also clamp one on the other side, which is this one. And so I've called them both clamp one, both down here on Norvis and in space. And so that means the ship will, um, at either end, when it stops moving, it will attempt to dock. And this does work. The ship has made several journeys back and forth. Um, it takes a few seconds to get there because it's only going into orbit. Going further would take a lot more, um, a lot more time and a lot more fuel. But this short hop is, is very, very quick. And so, yeah, it, it's working nicely. It's taking all the stuff up that I uh, that I need it to, and. Um, and doing what I want. So in the future, I'm going to try and make essentially more of these, more ships, and make and have them do more runs. But as I was saying in the previous episode, 
one of the things I want to do for that is to get ion engines up and working because this fuel is I'm not going to say it's expensive but it's a bit of a faff having to load quite a lot of it in and they get through and the engines get through quite a lot of it so I'd like to upgrade to ion engines which apparently use absolutely tiny tiny amounts of um, of ion stuff to the point where somebody in the in the comments was suggesting you can actually just fill the pipe work up on your ship and not bother with any tanks at all well, not bother with any tanks worth of, um, of ion flux or whatever it's called and the the engines will use so little so little ion uh, ionic what's, what's it even called uh, let me ion stream perhaps yes ion stream it uses so little ion stream you can get away with just having some pipes full of it and not having any tanks on your ship at all uh, which would definitely help a bit it, it would save space it saves the amount of storage space that's used up on the ship as well another thing that i'm quite tempted to do is to have um, a water transporting ship as well because i think that'll be quite a nice way to make um, nuclear power on dry planets a bit more feasible maybe even nuclear power in space that feels weird but it's it's, it's a possibility although that said in space the um, solar panels work quite nicely so maybe i just won't bother with that at all so that spaceships um it's, this is this is as I say as far as I've got at the moment, and it, it does work. I, w I would love to launch it, but I don't have any rocket fuel, and that's because I haven't set anything up to make rocket fuel in a sensible way yet, for uh, for this area. Over over here in my old rocket spaceport, we've got the system down here that's making turning turning um, crude oil through various processes into into rocket fuel, and we've filled up all of these, which is quite impressive. So everything is everything seems to be ticking over nicely here. Um, but back over on this side of the base, we are still making rocket fuel from vulcanite that gets brought in by train, and that's a bit, to be honest, that's a bit rubbish. Uh, I'd rather not. I, I need to upgrade that. That's one of the one of the things I need to do. Have I put it on my to-do list? Yes, I have. So that needs to be upgraded um, to, to produce rocket rocket fuel in a better way. Now there are pipes somewhere around here that are bringing the that are bringing uh, light oil and possibly heavy oil as well. Or petroleum gas as well it's not that far up um, oh here it is yeah these pipes are bringing the various types of oil over from my oil processing area because once upon a time I was putting these into oh in fact I, I already have done this a little bit I just need to do this a lot more obviously um, once upon a time I was putting these into barrels and shipping barrels around and that's uh, well I, I've, I've complained about barrels enough in the past you know how much I hate them um, now that I've got better ways of producing oil and things this is yeah, this is much better. So, I'm intrigued what's happening with all this rocket fuel. Let's quickly follow that and see. So it is all flowing up here. Is it being split up? No, that split is working on something else. So it is all flowing up here and up here. But there just doesn't seem to be very much of it. Maybe there was a shortage of oil before or something like that. Because um, then it gets to about here where we then ship it off into the rocket area and as you can see there's none on this belt at all um, but this should eventually be filtered through and turned into into rocket fuel for the uh, spaceship I think I'll need to check on that because this is all a, li all a little bit worrying but I'll come back and have a look at that later but yeah there's obviously been some sort of problem with my oil, oil supply over here um, I don't really know why because this is just fed straight off the top of here, so there should be a plentiful supply of it from this cracking. Oh, so this cracking, there's very little heavy oil in here. Okay, so there are some problems around here with the oil production. I'm going to need to have a look at that. Uh, but the basics are there. Okay, so that's um, that spaceships. That's been um, the, the, one of the big things I've done recently. So. Um, I think that's there's plenty more to do with these. I'm going to be able to do a, many, many cleverer things with spaceships in the long run, I think. This is just barely scratching the surface. However, it's my first spaceship and it's or my I suppose it's a, it's ba it is still the same first spaceship. It's just my but it's um, been modified a little bit. So it's now my first automated spaceship, which is a little bit more exciting. <laughs> so, there's plenty more to do with it, but this is doing this is working well for what I what I've designed the whole thing for. So, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, there's a bit more I'm going to talk about later. As you can see here, there's a, um, a little bit more science going on over here, but that's that's to come. For now, the spaceships are the uh, are the um, the exciting part of this episode. 
as always thank you for watching i hope you'll come back for the next one where as i said i shall talk about talk about the uh, the, the science because there's been some progress there and the uh, and of course i shall be um streaming again this week um my streams have been nudged over to thursday because real life has started happening on wednesdays but i'll be around as, as usual then mondays are still uh, factorio industrial revolution with friends so please do come along to that and the gta videos are going up a couple of times a week as well and they're they're all good fun and um, at least at least they're good. They're good fun when um, when my, when my friends aren't trying to wind me up and troll me all the way through the uh, all the way through the run. <laughs> uh, dear. So as as I said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.